Hello, I'm listening to a praise a song, and I don't own copyright privileges. I'm on a slow computer, and I'm quite a few times. I do not own copyright privileges to this young man's song. It's called Holy Spirit Come. It's by Patrick Mayberry. I do not own copyright privileges to his song. God gave it to him and gave it to him at the right time. I had nothing to do with the development of Holy Spirit Come by this praise leader, Patrick Mayberry. I do not own copyright privileges. I did not think about worshiping with these, uh, uh, with the piano, with the horn, with the sax, whatever he's, with his voice. I didn't even give birth to this person. I didn't authorize none of this. I don't own nothing. I ain't making no money off of his song. Okay? Don't own copyright privileges. Really don't own copyright privileges. Now I'm a minute, 20 seconds into this. And by rights, I shouldn't be given a notice that I did not mention it because I don't own copyright privileges. If it does come up, then I know somebody's anything at that computer. Okay, which often happens. But Lord, I'm asking you right now, this day, this sixth day of September, that you cover us with your blood, that you bind the works, Lord Jesus of darkness. Lord, that you loose the spirit of peace. That Lord, that since you are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, you are holy, you are powerful, you are all powerful. Lord, you are sovereign over all. I want you, Lord Jesus, not only to use me, but use my little computer. Use, Lord, my Wi-Fi. Use my electricity. Use my body. Use this house. Use me, Jesus, to give your name to thanks, because you sure do deserve it. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. I don't own copyright privileges. Hello? It says I have a low FPS. I don't know how to fix it. Could you fix it, please? Jesus, thank you. I have not because I asked not. <laughs> okay, praise the Lord, y'all. <laughs> I'm laughing because I have to do battle with the enemy early in the morning. Oh, man, I woke up early this morning. I woke up about three-ish or something like that. Three-ish. So, I went directly to the couch where I had my little prayer chair over there. And I knelt down. And me and the Lord had a long talk. Overdue. Overdue. Because sometimes I get busy and I get more quick. I try not to do that too often because that's dangerous. Don't own copyright privileges to this song right here. It is 3 minutes and 30, 40 seconds into the uh, little thing here. I don't own copyright privileges. It's my Patrick Mayberry. Lord, I thank you for Patrick Mayberry. I thank you, Lord, that you know, I thank God that when he wakes you up early in the morning, it's his Holy Spirit doing it. Did you know we have the, the right to call on the Holy Spirit. We have the privilege as priests and kings to summon the Holy Spirit into your uh, uh, atmosphere, wherever you are. In the name of Jesus, I had a long talk with the Lord this morning. I'm feeling pretty mighty. I'm pretty good about it. And that's good. I thank God for another day's journey. It's 8.40 a.m. It is 9.6 on September 6, 2022. And uh, 
I'm just going to invite you once, and I might invite you again and again. You folks out there, you Christians, you that call yourself uh, loving, you love one another? No. The um, rapper said, you, your love is measured by the, the hate you can love through. Listen, y'all want to hear or come to a, 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 some music or, or a place where the anointing is falling, but the anointing is falling like rain, like rain, because, you know, when, when we lost, when our pastor went home, because we ain't no losing, we ain't lost, we ain't lost. Some of us are lost, but he ain't lost. Um, man, our pastor went on to be with the Lord, talking about something. Lord is a bomb in Gilead. Oh my God. We have been given the right to invoke the Holy Spirit into the house. North Georgia Worship Center gets together and we get on, on one accord and one mind and the power of God comes in that place to all who will receive and what we need we get what we need we get it comes and it keeps coming also I want to tell you this y'all tired of a dried up church I don't know if there's any more because revival show sure enough is here honey <laughs> but man y'all want to go to a church that's popping North Georgia Worship Center okay we heard the best of preaching we 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 heard the worst to preach I'm talking about in my lifetime I ain't talking about yours what the Lord blesses it just can't be cursed number one just because he calls a servant home doesn't mean that the church don't roll on it, do. it does and it do. We're blessed at North George Worship Center on Bishop Road in Wildwood. We're blessed. If you can't do nothing but look at TV, catch us on YouTube, catch us on Facebook. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, I got this weird, weird, you know, like, to me it's weird. Because to deal with the subject that I'm getting ready to introduce to you, I think you got to be a Bible scholar. You got to know something. You got to spend some time in the Word. Got to ask the Lord. Why? Why? Why today? Well, I asked God that. Why? And he told me, just open your mouth. I'll tell you why. Okay? Uh, we climbing, honey, children, babies, sweethearts. We climbing. Jacob's ladder. Okay? We're climbing Jacob's ladder. And revival's here. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. So everybody, come out your little holes. I hate to be nasty like that lady was nasty. I'm not going to be nasty. Stop. Forgive me, y'all. Please forgive me. Come out your, your hidden places with all of your excuses. I don't have a car. 
You got legs, don't you? You know, if some of us would see people trying, they would help. But there are people that don't try. If you don't have a car, you don't have a bike, you got legs. You can walk to the house of prayer. And if you 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 say you don't have legs to walk with and just your wheelchair, you know how to open up that word. You know how to turn on that, that cell phone. You can do anything you want to do. Mm-hmm. You can't turn on a cell phone. You can lift your hands in praise every day. If you don't have hands, you have a mouth. We're given free will. Don't you want to live? Do you feel that how you are living is, is beneficial? Hmm? You're scared. You done got fat. Because you stay home all the time. You you all you do is overeat and that satisfies you for a little while, then you keep going and you eat some more. And you know you're killing yourself. But uh and I can't uh take the scale from your eyes. I can't. If, if, if you tell me one more one excuse, you'll tell me another excuse and you'll share another and the devil will continue to bombard you with ideology why you can't do better. The Bible says look and live. But when you have a, a, a Bible and you won't, you read it, but you don't believe it, what can someone do? But faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Keep reading that word. Keep availing yourself to righteousness. Keep calling on his name. Do what he tells you to do. And if you can do better, do it. Don't hate people who are trying. Don't hate others, because they're trying to do better with their lives. They're trusting God for healing. Like you running all over looking for another doctor to stamp your sickness, your children's sickness. Okay, don't hate others. I tell you, revival is here. And it's time to wake up. Look and live. What we're going to do this morning is look into the Bible, okay? Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If I overstepped my bounds and I'm, you feel that I'm using this as a platform, perhaps I am. Forgive me, but I just happen to love you. And uh, love is measured by the hate it can love through. God's given me some powerful stuff. And I'd be dang if I'm going to give it back to him. But I am going to love through the hate. I don't have nothing to lose. Nothing. I came here with nothing. I'm going to leave with nothing. Am I talking loud enough? Something's wrong here. Wait. Okay. Who's up? Let's close it up. All right. Now, there is a uh, song. It's Psalm 110. Okay. It's, it's what David spoke. See, David had to, just like us, he has to go higher to be stronger, to be a leader. 
the older he gets, the stronger he gets inside. Did you know that? The outer man perishes, but the, the, the spirit man, that inner man is being renewed day by day. And that inner man gets stronger and stronger as our outward man perishes. David um, had many, many, let's say, hills to climb. He had to overcome quite a few things, okay? And we as children of the Most High are, are at the brink of a great revival. And we are going to have to climb to get to where I believe the final you know, precipice is where Jesus will say, well, that's it. They done, they done hit it. I'm coming wrong back. We are about to enter the age of revival, spiritual awakening. Oh my, I have to say his name. Oh my God, oh my God. We are coming through. We, 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 after this is going to be another test, another trying of our faith. There's going to be more. The Bible says so. But we are to endure unto the end like he told us to. David had to endure. He had enemies. Okay. He had, um, I mean, let's face it. He talks about those enemies a couple of times in, in this. He talks about the battle. Okay. In Psalm 110. Listen to this. I, I think I love the uh, King James Version better than this uh, this version that I have been reading lately. Um, it's a seven verses of scripture. It won't kill you. So listen. David, uh, like I said, he had to go through stuff. David became a, a, a man after God's own heart. Yes, but he earned that title. We are men and women after God's own heart. We're crying out. We're talking to him about our troubles, honey. Because these troubles is, they appear to be uh, unsurmountable. You know, we have but to look to the left or the right. There's some trouble, some problems. Oh, my goodness. But we have to, as David did, go through okay who we are and this is my belief i believe i'll tell you that later but the psalm 110 and i'm going to read that to you the lord said unto my lord sit thou here on my right hand it didn't say here in the king james version sit thou on my right hand until i make thine enemies thy footstool the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. It's the Lord telling David what to do. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. Oh my goodness. You ever feel so strong? I do. Sometimes I feel that there's another body inside of me or another power because the outer man has these aches and pains, but this inner man says, keep going. It's just something, you know, I took some communion Sunday, Sunday, dang. Oh, I should add that loose here in the name of Jesus, forgive me y'all. I took some holy stuff, the Holy Communion Sunday, and um, hmm, it wasn't the Holy Communion that did it, because we just do that in, in remembrance of the Lord and, and of what He told us to do, and of His body and of the blood that He shed. We sang the at, at uh, all of it. We sang the, the the blood, what can wash away our sins. And, you know, that blood that keeps us strong from day to day. But dang, I got to tell you this. I used the word again. I'm sorry, y'all. Forgive me. I'm, I'm just me. I ain't nothing but me. 
I walked in that church. I put some heels on my feet Sunday. I'm 69 years old. And my ankles didn't hurt. My legs didn't hurt. I felt good. Like a 20-year-old in heels. And I wore them into the second service that I went to. Jesus. And this is after, this is the day after I mowed the lawn. You see this crazy face? It happened. That's why it looks so crazy, because it actually happened. 69 years old. You sit there and be old if you want to. Go on in. Shucks, I got to see what the rest is going to be like. Anyway, David said, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. I think I gets it while I'm at North Georgia Worship Center. We praise and worship God so so long and hard. <laughs> Golly. I gets it because they 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 start burning a fire, baby. They they got the fire going there. Anyway, fourth verse says, The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore shall he lift up the head. Wow. The Lord is at thy right hand. I'm reading the fifth verse to the seventh verse again. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath, he shall judge among the heathen. He's going to do that, but he's going to be at my right hand. He's going to be at your right hand, okay? All right? Hmm. If I go back to that fourth verse, you better hold on to your hats, okay? It says, the Lord has sworn and will not repent. This is what he told David. He said, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't understand it. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek? Is he just talking about David or is he talking about you and me? Melchizedek priesthood. Did you know that there was a priesthood called the Melchizedek priesthood? First, let's go back to Melchizedek. Who in the ham blazes was he? Well, he's a biblical figure. Uh, he was the ruler of Salem. Ruler of peace. Salem means peace. And he was a priest of El Elyon. Well, what in the world was El Elyone? Where is that? Well, the name El Elyon is translated in the Bible, the Most High God. Some people believe that El Elyon was Israel. But I like this definition, that El Elyon is translated the Most High God. He's depicted, uh, Melchizedek is depicted as one who brings bread and wine and then blesses El Elyon. That's using Israel. He's blessing El Elyon. He's blessing El Elyon. He's blessing God. And he blessed Abraham. Okay? I don't understand this. I don't. I, I try to understand what I'm saying. I'm trying to hook it together. 
y'all chew the meat up and spit out the bones. That's what my mother told me. Well, Melchizedek is depicted as one who brings bread and wine and then blesses El Elyon. He blesses Almighty God and he blesses Abraham. Okay. Melek means king. Uh, Sedek, as in Melchizedek, means righteousness. Melek or Me Melkek or Melek means king, and Sedek means righteousness. Melchizedek. Okay? Melchizedek was greater than Aaron. He was even greater than Abraham, okay? Um, there's a group of people that believe that he was the predecessor, the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ. That's wrong. That's that he was not. He was a type of and shadow of Jesus Christ. Okay. He was greater than Aaron. Uh, Aaron. He was even greater than Abraham. He was the only one who could present a gift to God. Well, found out a few things. Um. He never rises. Melchizedek never rises to the uh, to the level of being uh, an angel or pre-incarnated Christ. He doesn't rise to that in the Bible. He remains a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Right? Uh, that's what it says in Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews 5 1. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for man in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. So doesn't that strike down? He was an important king, yes. He foreshadows the King of Kings, hmm, our Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. He points out Jesus as the greater priest than the Levites, for Jesus is a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Melchizedek is a mysterious guy. He really is. Um, there's a few things that uh, I wrote a, down that the printer didn't print up. But I'm going to give you what I got on this crazy paper here. I'm going to tell you that you and I have the right and the privilege. That's what this, this is about. We have the right and the privilege to call on the Most High God and to invoke the Holy Spirit in our worship services. See, we've come to a point in our lifetime, in this history, that we're going up higher. In your services, you're going up higher. You're learning how to invoke his presence. You're learning how to, to bring him into um you're learning how to bring him into uh our presence we're learning that we're learning that we can call on his holy name i remember years ago i do i really remember it and and i'll never forget it there was this lady named ruth white and that sounds like a familiar name doesn't it she would come in and do an evangelistic uh, revival. They'd send for her. This church down on uh, 
It was one of those bad areas of, of the Bronx. Man, Ruth White. Oh my God, did I admire that lady. I admire that lady. I remember sitting in that congregation as a teenager. I wanted what she had. I wanted what she had. She knew how to pull the Holy Spirit up out of her and in and and out of the stratosphere, out of the atmosphere. She knew how to command the Holy Spirit to come. And when the Holy Spirit comes, that's when the freedom comes and the power and the anointing and the victory. And I remember it. And I wanted to hear her all the time. I'm crying because Pastor Adam said, which Sunday you said, you asked for it. <laughs> and I did. Yeah, I asked the Holy Spirit. I asked the Lord to give me that anointing. I asked him for a double portion. Some of you did too. Triple portion. Y'all asked him. Listen, he's pouring out his spirit right now. Yes. And you belong to the Melchizedek, the priesthood of Melchizedek. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. We're going and rising and going up a mountain. But remember this, and this is the main thing, and I'm talking too much. Psalm 110 and 7. We're going to drink, and we're going to have to drink from a brook along the way. Okay? We're going to have to drink from a brook along the way. All right, we're traveling. We're getting ready to go higher heights and deeper depths. This is a revival here. Okay? The harvest is plentiful. Okay? It's time. He's coming back again. And we're going up higher. We're going to have to drink. We're going to get tired. We're going to get uh, 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 whatever. We will be attacked by the spirit of discouragement. We will be attacked by fear. We will be attacked. Okay? We're going to be attacked. But we are going to have our defenses on. We're going to have on our whole armor. We're going to put on that helmet. We're not just going to talk about it. We're not just going to talk about that breastplate. We're going to guard this heart. We're going to uh, wrap that loin up with the word of God. Spirit of truth. We're going to put our feet, shod those feet. With the preparation of the gospel of peace, we're going to do it. But you got to drink from the fountain. Okay? It's a brook. It's not a, a fountain. It's a brook. Water's flowing through it. we got to drink from that brook. And so he will lift up his head. High, high, you Melchizedek priests, he's going to lift our heads up high. They've talked about the church for a long time, how, uh, and belittle it, belittle it, and, and how, oh, this one's stealing, and that one's uh, couldn't admit the adultery, and this one is doing this in the church, and that one is doing, hey, Y'all, let's drink so let's get to work. from the brook, get going. Get hustling. okay, get which is the word of God, which is service to the Most High God, uh, which is the power that he will give us to go up this mountain. We're getting ready to ascend, boo-boo. We got to drink from the brook. Come on now. That's your strength. Listen to this. Melchizedek Greece priesthood is the authority, responsibility, and power to act in the name of Jesus Christ. We, it, we have the authority to organize, direct part of his work through the opportunities of his priesthood. Men and women uh, partnership with God and can conduct the work of the family of the church. Hallelujah. I found that. We've got work to do. We've got things to do within the um, within the church house itself. We've got work to do, and we ought to forget who we are 
and whose we are. We are not, uh, we are not uh, 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 anything other than who God made us. We're not higher than God. We're not, you know, it's not in us. It's him. But we are in the Melchizedek priesthood. Y'all in your churches, wherever you go to church, come on. Come on, we got praying, praying to do. We got laying on, on of hands. We got encouragement. We got a lot of love to do, to fight through. We climbing. And if you've ever heard this particular song at your church, well, maybe you haven't. You need to come to North Georgia Worship Center and hear them sing it. And, and, and feel the uplifting. See, this man here is also of the Melchizedek priesthood. We have the authority to work in God's interest. You mothers, you fathers, you deacons, you sisters, you children, you ministers, you greeters, you ushers. Hello? Melchizedek priesthood. Come on now. I hope you understood some of what I said. And if not, do your own research. But you better drink. Like, like David did. He knew where he was going. He was going. There was nowhere for him to go but up. And he ascended. He will drink from the brook along the way. And he will lift his head high. Drink from the brook. The brook. My name is Mother Gail Trailer, And I'm just passing. Okay.